Exactly, exactly. Uh, so you didn't ref your game, so, so you should be okay. Uh, the guy with the... I guess our mic is live. I guess our mic is live. Our, I don't know if you're live, live. They heard it on the broadcast. Oh. Well, they shouldn't have me up. <laughs> it's their fault.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's 2A GSHL League matchup where we have the visiting Hudson's Bay Eagles taking on the home team, the Fort Vancouver Trappers. We are live from the trap here. Uh, my name is Dimitri Light, and alongside me is my partner in crime, as always, Sid Sloan. Sid, how are you doing tonight, buddy? Oh, man, we're in the trap. We got senior night. We got things. We got some celebrations going on and some uh, seniors that are being honored. This is going to be an awesome night tonight. Yeah, so as we uh, get the starters going, uh, we're just trying to kind of get used to some technical things here going on. But starting for the Eagles, we've got uh, number two, the junior, Rafael Bauman. We've got number three, the senior, Greg Perry. We're going to start another junior, number five, Lincoln Goode. We've got the freshman, number 12, starting to kill Bauman. And the other freshman, number 32, Jackson Appelt. The Eagles looking like they're going to start a little small here to start the game. Yeah, this is uh, going back to what we talked about on our last broadcast last week. The Eagles are young. They got two freshmen, two, two juniors, and a senior. So we'll get to see them real early. Jackson Appelt last week came off the bench, quick 15-point spark. So I think Coach Tony Holmes is looking for some scoring right off the bat. All right, so as we get ready for the uh, for Vancouver to come out, the first starter is Liam Savitkovic. The next up is going to be the senior number one, Aaron Melendez. Up next for the seniors, the second of the four seniors, number three, Caleb Savitkovic. Next up, number 34, Antonio Barajas, the senior. And the last 
uh, starter for the Trappers is going to be number 14, Tavon Vance. So Coach James Inslee going with four seniors and the sophomore, Liam Savikovic. What do you think about that, Sid? You know what, Coach Ensley, he loves this group. He was just talking about how much fun he's having with this group. The wins may not be here, but they work hard every day, show up, and a lot of these kids are four-year um, basketball kids. So it's exciting to see them get one more opportunity. Uh, anyone that's been a part of Bay Fort knows that crazy things happen on the final night of seasons. Last year, we had Joey Gordon hitting a three to win a game. So, I mean, hopefully you're in for a show tonight. Yeah, so the first time these teams met, Bay, it was at Bay, and Bay won pretty decisively. I feel it was a 15, 20 point ball game, so uh, the Trappers want to change that tonight. Um, we've, like Sid said, we got a great crowd in here. This is, this is going to be fun. We've got a lot of who's who's in the building, and uh, it's going to be great. So, looks like we've got the freshman Jackson Abel and the senior Kayvon jumping up. Fort controls the tip. Caleb brings the ball up the court, kicks it to Aaron on the wing, back to Caleb. The Eagles come out in the 2-3 zone, swings the ball to Antonio Barajas. I think one of the benefits right now that Coach Tony Holmes has is Fort is not gifted with size, so he's able to go with a smaller lineup. Fort turns it over on their first possession. Rob Bauman attacks the hoop, goes up for two, misses, but gets his own offensive rebound. We're going to have a foul. Uh, he tries to go back up strong. Gets fouled. Is it going to be on the ground? Oh, they call that on the ground on the senior, number 34, Barajas. So Eagles are going to take the ball, baseline out of bounds. One thing for Ford is they cannot afford to get into foul trouble. They don't go very deep on the bench, so Coach Ensley needs them to stay out of foul trouble. All right. The freshman to kill Bellman with the ball up top, kicks it to the right wing to Jackson Appel. Drives baseline, nothing there. Swings it back up top, swings it to Rob Bellman. Fake the three, drives down the middle, two, no good. Liam with the defensive rebound. Fort pushes the ball in transition. Aaron with the ball, kicks it to the corner to Antonio, swings it back out to Caleb. Just kind of surveying who he's got as Bay's in that two, three. They kick it to the high post, out to the corner. Baseline to Tavon. Ooh, and we're gonna have a foul. Who do they call that on? They're gonna call that on number five the junior, Lincoln Good. Yeah, Lincoln's playing in the middle right now. He's not a big guy, but he's athletic and just kind of gets in the way right there with that tip. Fort gets the ball back. Liam goes up, gets fouled. Looks like that's going to be on number three, Craig Perry. So Liam's going to go to the line and shoot two. Again, it's going to come down to free throw shooting. Um, a lot of these games are going to be close. A lot of these games have a lot of emotion. So when you can knock down free throws and take these points where you can get them. All right, Liam knocks down the first. Um, he's going to attempt the second here in a second. And we're also what myself and Sid are going to try to do is feed you in on some games that are going around tonight. We've got a lot of playoff games. We've got some tiebreakers in the 3A. Um, we also know that um, there's some other 2A matchups going on. So we want to try and bring you all of that as... Caleb with the deep three. The Trapper's up 4-0 early. It's tough when you give up that offensive rebound. They're able to cycle it around, and he was able to be the trail guy and hit that deep three and close to the volleyball line on that. All right, so it looks like the Trappers are in there. A little 1-2-2. Jackson Appel gets to the elbow. Jumper no good. Fort with the rebound. Aaron Melendez looking to press. Gets trapped. Turns the ball over to Jackson Appel. We got a little three on two. Takes it. Layup no good. Akil Bauman with the rebound. Pulls it out to set something up against this zone. Swings it to Jackson, back to a kill. A little bit of surveying, drives to the elbow, passes to Lincoln Good. Never seen that. Throws it off the player because he didn't want to get the up and down call. Jackson called driving. Tough two, no good. Lincoln Good comes up with the offensive rebound, kicks it to Greg Perry. Three ball, no good. It's going to be a really physical game, and this crowd is going to play a huge part in it because it is wired in here right now. Every tip ball, every jump pass, every miss shot, is they are getting everything that they, got, they came for. All right, Sid, you've coached on both sides of this rivalry. Tell me a little bit about this. You know what? It's just one of those games where you can throw the records out the window. You can, you can try and, and simulate what this is at practice, but... You know that when the game time starts, both teams are going to play hard. You don't want to lose to your neighbor. Um, and you just want to make sure that you can maintain those bragging rights. Jackson Appel, deep three, no good. Defensive rebound, Tavon Vance. Ooh, this is 
Lee, Liam Savitovich brings the ball up, kicks it to his brother Caleb, who then kicks it to Aaron. Back up to Caleb, swing to Antonio, down to the short corner. Aaron flashes right down the key, jumper no good. Fighting for the loose ball. Ford gets on it. They end up with it. Aaron has the ball, kicks it to the right corner. Antonio Barajas, three, no good. Defensive rebound, Hudson's Bay. Rob Bauman pushes the tempo, sees what he can see. Doesn't have anything, pulls it back out. Kill survey and looks like he wants to look down in the post. Nope. Drives baseline, swings to Lincoln Good. Corner three, no good. Defensive rebound, Fort. It's been a tough start offensively for both teams. I mean, Fort has the three. Liam, no good on the three, ends up in Fort's hand. Aaron with the three, top of the key, no good. Looks like we're getting an over the back call on number 14, Tavon Vance. Again, Bay doesn't have a ton of size right now, neither does Fort. Lincoln Good is battling down low right now. Um, but he did a great job boxing out on that. Looks like we've got two substitutions. We've got Braden Pennington entering the game, as well as Cole Ogden, both seniors. All right, so we're going to give you some halftime scores here. We've got Kelso up 36-30 over Mountain View at the half, and we've got Mark Morris um, up 32-31 over R.A. Long at the half. So just kind of giving you guys some updates there. As Jackson Appel has the ball at the high post survey, kicks to Greg Perry, corner three, no good. Scramble, Ford ends up with the basketball, Aaron, Aaron on the fast break, layup, and one, got it. Gonna go for the three point play the old fashioned way. We got a foul on number zero, Cole Ogden. Yeah, right now it just looks like Bay is a step slow. Um, obviously, Ford is coming off the emotion of senior night. They are trying to get a win over their rivals and just seem to be a step quicker to the ball. Aaron converts on a three point play. The score is the Trappers seven, the Eagles zero. So, Sid, if you're the Eagles, what do you run right here to try to get a good look at a bucket? You know what? You're going to run through the offense, try to get some movement, try to make that zone move side to side, and then hope that you can get an, a quick shot in the middle. All right, so Eagles have been bringing it down possession. Braden Pennington, deep three, no good. Offensive rebound, Greg Perry, no good. Cole Ogden, offensive rebound for the Eagles. Goes up, no good. Fort secures the defensive rebound. Ford is just crashing the boards right now. They're sending everybody to get that defensive rebound. Antonio and Barajas drives baseline, kicks it to the top for Caleb. Three, no good. And it looks like Tavon Vance is going to pick up his second. So we've got to see what Coach Inslee decides to do. Does he leave him in or does he um, pull him? Looks like he's going to stay with him, Sid. You know, that's uh, something that we talked about with Coach Inslee. He said that Tavon's come such a long way from where he started. And now he can trust him when these kinds of situations. He's going to really need to trust him with two early fouls in the first quarter. All right, Akil with the ball up top, swings it to his brother, Ra, who surveys deep three, no good. Defensive rebound, Fort. All right, Caleb pushes the tempo, kicks it to Antonio Barajas, corner three ball, off the backboard, no good. Braden Pennington with the rebound. All right, Bay's pushing in transition as well. This game is going to be up and down. Ra with the floater at the elbow, no good. Gets his own rebound, goes up, no good. Greg Perry with the offensive rebound, gets it up. Got it. So that Eagles get the fun. first bucket at the 243 mark. You know what? That is just energy and effort right there by first Raw and then GP being able to put that back up, get those offensive rebounds. All right. Ford got the ball to the high post. Aaron drives down the middle. Nobody steps up. Easy two. Well, and I think this goes back to when you take Lincoln Groot out, you lose some of that size and athleticism and just kind of that pestiness that uh, he brings to the game. All right. Akil with the ball up top. Swings it to his brother Raw in the right corner. Back to a kill up top. Looks to drive. Doesn't have what he's looking for. His fort's kind of in that one, two, two. Kicks to the shooter in the left corner. Air ball. No good. Caleb gets it. Man, out in transition is Fort Vancouver. You can see that baseball throw from him. No, Somehow my goodness. My God. Wide Antonio open. Barajas getting up and down the yeah. court. 11 to 2. We're going to pick up a foul here on the Fort Vancouver Trappers. Let's see who they assign that to. Antonio Barajas making the run, throwing the pass back. Great job by the senior. That foul is going to go to number one, Aaron Melendez. 
Looks like we got a 30 second timeout from Fort Vancouver. It's a good timeout by Coach Ensley. Calm the team down. You've got an 11 2 lead. You've got everything that you really wanted right now. You just have to make sure that you are maintaining your defensive pressure and going to get a rebound. All right, one of the, uh, no, we just, somebody sent us another score update. So we've got Evergreen 32 over Heritage 24 in the Texas tiebreaker. So now Evergreen's going to play a back to back. Right now versus Prairie, the winner of that game is going to take third in the 3A playoffs and play, I believe, this Saturday. So there's a lot going on right now. Yeah, you know what? That's awesome that they didn't just flip a coin or they didn't go off of some weird tiebreaker. Let them play. Obviously, they played a half each. So, I mean, good on Evergreen to get out of that first half. And now let's see what they can do against Prairie. So we want to give a shout out. Uh, Will Jones is helping us out. He is sending us updates. So Will, keep it up and thank you for that. The Grizz. The Grizz. All right, Akil kicks it, inbounds it to his brother. Raw swings it to Braden Pinning, swings it back to the top. Fort still on the one, two, two. Bay is trying to get this zone to shift from side to side. Akil with the ball on the right side, swings to his brother on the left side. Akil Bauman with the ball, about 13 seconds left. Surveying, see what he's got. They're still on that 1-2-2, two, two, eight seconds. Cole has it, baseline, drives baseline. Steps out of bounds, turnover bay. That is a tough one to go 25 seconds and then turn the ball over without a shot. It was a great job by Tavon Vance for coming over, help side on that, and just adding that little bit of indecisiveness. All right, so Bay's in the 2-3. Fort kicks it to high post, swings it out to Liam. Three ball, got it. 14-2 Trappers. I think right now if you're Hudson's Bay, you got to weather this storm. This is coming off of senior night. This is a lot of energy, the home crowd. All right, kill deep three. Looks like it Fort possessed it, but then went to make the pass, turned it over. So we're gonna, I think it's going to be Bay's ball on the baseline there. You got to love when you have two Fort guys on the ground fighting with each other, trying to get that loose ball. All right, Cole Ogden inbounds it to a kill. Takes the 12 foot jumper, no good. Raw with the offensive rebound. Tried to get rid of it, couldn't get rid of it. Up and down, call the travel in. So, got 55 seconds left. Fort Vancouver 14, Eagles two. Does Fort go for a two for one here? You know, I think Coach Ensley's just looking for a good shot. If you can get a good shot early, then do that. If not, Liam, corner three. No good. Aaron with the offensive rebound, though. I guess we're going to have a foul on the ground first on number two, Ra Bauman. So, foul count right now is 4-4. Pretty even. Both teams are playing hard, but you can see that the energy is causing the kids to pick up those extra fouls. Oh, for sure. Well, and, and you've got a Tavon gets great the inbound play. Great inbound play. Caleb to Tavon. Easy two. 16-2. Well, and they ended up getting that two-for-one because now there's about a six-second difference between the play clock and the uh, game clock. All right, so Akil, or excuse me, Raw has the ball at the top of the key, swings it to his brother Akil on the right corner, to Cole Ogden in the baseline, to Braden corner, corner three, no good. Cole's trying to keep it alive, does keep it alive. Out of bounds, stays with Bay. It feels like even though Fort doesn't have a ton of size, they've got a lot of length down below that there's making him feel uncomfortable. All right, 17 seconds, Akil with the ball at the top, swings to Rob, back to Akil. Swings over to Braden. Rob tried to make that pass to Greg Perry, couldn't make it. Tipped off of Tavon's hands, out of bounds. So the Eagles are going to have it with seven seconds left. Again, Tavon's listed at 6'3". Um, he's just long and athletic and got in the way of that pass right there. All right, seven seconds. Let's see what they do here. Kill surveys, gets to the elbow. Kicks it to Cole Ogden, drives baseline, corner jumper, no good. So, after one, Fort Vancouver 16, the Hudson's Bay Eagles 2. So, a lot different from the first time these two teams met. If, question for you, Coach Sid. All right, I'm James Inslee, great first quarter. What am I talking about right now? You know what, again, you're trying to maintain this energy and you're just trying to maintain this defensive pressure. You know at some point Bay's going to start scoring. You know at some point their shots are going to start to fall. You just have to make sure you're rebounding and getting out. Uh, the one thing that they did really well was they got defensive rebounds and then got an open shot. So they were able to run through their offense, find open shooters. So you got to be happy with that. All right. So then the opposite of that, right? Your coach, Tony Holmes for the Hudson's Bay Eagles, not the way you want to start. 
What are you telling your guys there in that huddle? Well, you know what? It can't get much worse at this point. So you are telling them that first quarter's done. It's a 14-point game, but we've seen Hudson Bay put up points. It looks like Isaac Finn has entered the game. So hopefully that can be some, some much-needed offense. Yeah, so uh, like you said, Isaac Finn's going to get to start in the second quarter. He is the 17 points per game, 9.9 .9 rebounds per game. So close to the double-double. So didn't have him the first quarter for whatever reason, but now they got him here probably for the rest of the game. So let's see what kind of impact he has. So the Eagles start with Jackson Appel, Rob Bauman, Braden Pennington, Lincoln Goode, and Isaac Finn. And Isaac Finn pulls with the elbow jumper, no good. Ford gets a defensive rebound. Aaron Melendez looking to get out and push, doesn't see what he likes, kicks it out to the top to Caleb Savitkovich, who drives, finds Antonio Barajas, corner three, got it! Bang! From the corner, that's a great shot. All right, so the Trappers continue that, that first quarter. 19-2, uh, 17 point lead, Isaac Finn has the ball, gets a soft double, kicks it out to Ross, swings it to Braden, to Lincoln, back to Braden, deep three, no good. Trappers with the defensive rebound, they look, get out and run, Aaron, easy layup. Right now, Fort Vancouver is just outworking Hudson's Bay. They've gotten to every loose ball, they're getting up and down the court, they're just beating them at the game of physicality. And now the Fort Vancouver fans are getting into this, so that could not be good things for the Hudson Bay Eagles. Jackson Appel takes the three, misses, Fort gets the defensive rebound, but it gets poked out, last touch for it. So the Eagles are going to have the ball on their baseline. And Braden Pennington is subbed out, uh, and Akil Bauman checks into the game. All right, so Rod drives baseline, looks to attack Tavon. They're going to give him the foul, but let's see who that's on. Because if that's on number 14, that's going to be three. So let's see if they, oh, they do charge that to number 14, Tavon Vance. That's his third. They're going to say he got him with the body below. The block was clean, but got him with the body. So Rob Bauman's at the line shooting two. That was a good take by Rob. Aggressive take, going to the hoop, looking for that contact. All right, so Rob misses the first of the free throws. We've got number 13 checking in. That is Bernando Castro Hernandez. So hopefully I said that right. I'm sorry, Bernardo, if, Bernardo, if I messed that up. So we're going to have a lane violation there. So that would have been good, but lane violation on the freshman 32 Jackson Appel. So the bucket is no good. So 21 to 647 left to play. These are the things that you cannot afford to have. That's taking a point off the board in a game that right now points are limited. All right, so Caleb went to get rid of it, got doubled, turns the ball. Rob Bauman first forces the turnover, so let's see what they run here. Rob gets to the elbow, tough layup, got it. It's a good take by Rob, able to get that. This could be the spark of what uh, Hudson's Bay is looking for. All right, so Hudson's Bay is now in the man-to-man, -man, so let's see what James Inslee decides to do. Bern Bernardo, corner three, no good, but Liam gets the rebound. Swings it to Caleb in the corner. Three ball, no good. Ford gets another offensive rebound. Liam quarter three, got it. Bang, bang, bang. 24-4. When you're not getting rebounds or giving up extra offensive possessions, eventually those shots are going to fall. So, Raw, great take down the lane. Layup, no good. Finn fighting, somehow lands in Ross. Hands, easy two. So 24-6. That's a great job by Isaac Finn, just battling, making sure that, that ball was stand up and Ra was able to grab that and put that in. And that's one of those things that doesn't go in the stat book as an offensive rebound, but he keeps that play alive and allows Ra to come back and, and pick that up and get the two points there. Looked like Aaron drive and was bodied on his way to the hoop, so they're going to call that foul on number 12, the freshman Akil Bauman. Um, ball is going to be baseline. Foul count right now, 5-5. Five, five. Time on the clock, 5-30. Your score, Fort Vancouver 24, Hudson's Bay 6. So Ra's going to get a quick breather as the senior Greg Perry checks in. Caleb tried to force that one to Aaron, cutting down in the middle of the key, but Akil did a great job of tipping that and, and uh, allowing Fort to try this again. Ooh. Caleb with a great fake. Brother Liam comes wide open. Easy two-point bucket there. Right now, Fort Vancouver is just doing the little things right. So they are just making their shots. They're getting those extra rebounds, passing the ball, making the extra pass. 
All right, Finn has the ball right side, surveys, drives baseline into a double, tough two, no good, but great offensive rebound there. Number three, Greg Perry, easy putback. That's going to be really important that other people are able to step up because obviously Coach Ensley is focused on stopping Isaac Finn, and the defense knows where he is at all times. All right, so base still in man. Caleb with the ball, drives down the middle, tough two, no good. They're going to say he's fouled on the arm. Let's see who they charge that foul to. They're going to charge that foul to number five, the Lincoln Good. I believe that's his second foul. So does Coach Tony sub him out or leave him in just with his energy? I think you leave him in. He's He does a good job. He's a smart enough player to know, hey, you can't reach on those simple calls and all. And he did a good job on that. Just can't hack down on a, a player going to the hoop. All right, so Caleb knocks down the first one. Let's see if he can knock down the second. Gets the second, a little shooter's bounce there. So, Coach Tony actually is going to make a, oh, he's going to call a timeout first here. So, Coach Tony's going to take the 30-second timeout. So, score update, 451. Fort Vancouver Travers, 28. Hudson's Bay Eagles, 8. You know, if you're Hudson's Bay, again, as much as you don't love being down 20 points, you know that this is a team that you can compete with and a team that you've beaten before. You just have to start taken piece by piece and just kind of go from there. I mean, you cannot look at it as a 20-point comeback because there's no 20-point shot in basketball. So right. you just have to kind of take it possession by possession. Right now, defensive rebounding is what their downfall is. Sports getting three, four, five, six chances at a possession. So while we are on this pause on this break, we want to give a quick shout out to our referees tonight. So our three referees, and we apologize, we do not have their last names, but we do have their first names. So we've got Brandon, Carlos, and Matt. So. Tough job out there. We want to show them the love. It is not an easy job to to call or officiate a basketball game. I've been on that side, and there's a reason I did not last. <laughs> no, they do a, they do a great job, and I mean, again, they see things that we may or may not see, it, but uh, they're out there. And if you're interested in doing that, I know that all referee and umpire associations are looking for more people. And as much as we, uh, you know, we love high school sports, this can't be done without ref. So we highly encourage you guys, whatever the sport is, football, basketball, volleyball, baseball, softball, um, we encourage you to get out, find your local association and get out there and participate. So there was a foul there on um, number zero. That would have been Liam Savitkovic. Uh, so the Eagles got the ball set up, three ball. Isaac Finn. Isaac that three, Finn, yep. so making his making his presence known early. And with the ball, drives down the middle. Looks like gets fouled going up on number 12. By number 12 of the Eagles, that would be the freshman, Akil Bauman. So Aaron's going to go to the line and shoot two. Aaron Melendez is a quick player. He's strong going to the hoop. He's, he's been in attack mode all night tonight. And again, that's what you expect from a senior who's playing his final game in a Fort Vancouver uniform. All right, so he misses the, four, the first one. Um, we're going to have a sub. So number two, Raphael Bauman checks in for his brother, number 12, Kill Bauman, who picked up his second. So let's see if Aaron can knock down this one. They're going to say no good lane violation on the shooter. So he stepped over the line before the ball at the rim. So Technically, that one doesn't count, so 28-11, 4-21 left to play. That's the second lane violation that we've seen in, in just this first half. So, I mean, a lot of pressure felt by these kids. Rafael Bauman for two on that. Okay. So, 28-13. Liam brings the ball up, kicks it to number 13, Bernardo, who swings it back to Liam. Liam tries to find Antonio in the corner, but stolen by number 32, Jackson Appel. So, let's see if the Eagles can capitalize on that turnover. Rise the ball and swings, swings it out top to Isaac Finn, who tries to create for himself. Step back, no good. He gets rid of it to Greg Perry. Jackson Appel, corner three, no good. Rebound, Trappers. Aaron leaks out, easy two. Oh, didn't get it. I'm sorry, I jinxed him there. Great job by Isaac Finn and Jackson Appel getting back on defense. Ooh, great take there by the freshman, number 32. Gets to the rack pretty easily there. Fouled by number three, Caleb Savitkovic. Well, that's one thing that Jackson showed last week when the game, in the game against River was that he's able to get to the hoop. He's able to get points on the board. Um, his struggle last week was staying out of foul trouble. So, 
he knocks down the first one there. And it looks like for the Trappers coming in is number 10, Jamo Hicks. And again, sorry if I pronounced that as number 13, Bernardo Castro Hernandez takes a seat. Coach Ensley going to the bench, trying to maintain uh, some depth as this second quarter rolls on. All right, so Eagles um, cut that lead down for the Trappers to 13 with 3.30 left to play. Antonio tried to drive baseline, forced the pass, a little bit of a delay whistle there, so that foul is going to be charged to number zero, Cole Ogden, which is going to put Antonio Barajas at the line, shooting a one and one These are big free throws because that ball was in the possession of Hudson's Bay prior to that foul being called, so he can get these points. So he knocked down the first one. And Tavon Vance is going to come back into the game with three fouls. So a little interesting there by Coach James Inslee. So obviously there's a reason he's the coach, and we're sitting over here. So he trusts his guys, and we love it. Yeah, Coach Inslee and Coach James Jones at the front of that bench, they do a great job of getting these kids prepared and just kind of getting them ready for each situation. So Antonio knocked down the second. So it's the lead back up to 15 for the Trappers. Greg Perry had the ball on the block, went to go up, slipped out of his hands. Possession's going to stay, however, with the Eagles. So let's see what they do here. If they try to find their 17 and 10. Nope, Rob Alman drives down the middle, hits the floater, no good. Isaac Finn just battling in there, man amongst boys. Gets the offensive rebound and the putback. Well, and that's what Isaac did against River last week. And again, uh, if he's out on the perimeter, Fort's probably winning that matchup. But down low, he, there's, they don't have anyone that can match that. All right, so Liam drives to the rack, misses the layup. Finn with the rebound. Finn has the ball now at the top of the key. Surveys, three ball, no good. Tavon with the defensive rebound. Aaron Melendez has the ball, finds Antonio who rips baseline. Tries to make the pass to Liam, but it is stolen by the Eagles in number 32, Jackson Appel. That's a good job by Jackson Stain. Who Rob Bauman went to crossover, lost it. Aaron gets it. Great hustle back, though, however, by Rob Bauman to knock that, strip that, and save the layup. So Trappers are going to have the ball, 219 left. Well, and not only Rob, there were two or three Eagles that got back, and that's the kind of thing that's going to help Hudson's Bay get back into this. T Tavon Vance sets the a screen away, flashes back, wide open, easy two. Hudson's Bay has been hit got a couple of times on both of those uh, baseline out of bounds, so they got to make that change going into halftime, it looks like. Appel, top of the three key, no good. Tavon Vance with the defensive rebound. So, comes in, three-minute mark, and has already snagged three boards. Caleb has the ball, gets to the middle of the key, kind of backs down Greg Perry, two-point two bucket, no, no good. Isaac Finn, defensive rebound. You know, that was a nice move by Caleb. I think he just ended up a little too low under the hoop. Braden Perry, Pennington, three ball, no good. Right now, Hudson's Bay needs to attack the hoop. The long jump shots are not what's working for them. Um, they were able to cut down that lead from 20 to 15, but the long, early three-pointers are not what Coach Tony looks like he's looking for. A little score update real quick around the county. We've got... Uh, Mountain View up 40, 39 over Kelso at Skyview. And then we've got Mark Morris, 39 over Arlong, 38 halfway through the third. So we've got some good action going around. Aaron Melendez takes the ball down the key. Floater, no good. Defensive rebound, Isaac Finn. Good job by Isaac Finn staying down, keeping his arms straight up. Rob Alman drives down the middle of the key. Gets a good look at a layup, but just could not get the touch. Fort with the defensive rebound, but then turns it over to Jackson Appel. Greg Perry, however, turns it over, and then we're going to have a reach-in foul on number 24, Isaac Finn, which is going to put Tavon Vance at the line, shooting the one-and-one. One. Well, and see, those are the fouls that Hudson Bay can't have. You've got Isaac Finn is too important for them offensively and defensively to pick up a foul on the other side of the court, and now Fort Vancouver is shooting one-and-one for one free throws. So 58 seconds left in the second. Fort Vancouver, 32, Hudson's Bay Eagles, 17. Tavon Vance at the line shooting a one and one 
Does not get it. Isaac Finn with the defensive rebound. That's probably, what, four or five boards for Isaac in this quarter alone? You know what? He's made a big difference when he came in in the second quarter. So uh, it looks like that is one of the keys to make that change. So Braden drives baseline, misses the layup. Finn gets the offensive rebound and one. So he's going to go to the line and see if he can convert the old-fashioned way three-point play. And that foul is going to be charged to number zero, Liam Savitovich. So does 41 seconds, does Coach Inns pull him out? No, you know what, I think Coach Ensley, again, uh, going back to he trusts this group, Isaac misses the free throw on that. 40 seconds, you're probably looking for a good shot, if not to run out most of this uh, first half. Antonio Barajas. That is a good ball, shot. Corner pocket, bang, bang, and bang. That is exactly what Coach Ensley and Coach James Jones over there drew up. Brendan Pennington looked to match, kicks it out to Rob Bauman, who looks to match. Top of the key three, no good. Possession, can't see. Okay, it's going to be the Trapper's ball. That's a tough possession for the Eagles because they were almost even with the shot clock and the game clock, and now uh, Fort Vancouver has 17 seconds and counting. All right, so Caleb bringing the ball up the court, guarded by Greg Perry. Stops at the top of the key. Eight seconds. A little bit too much dribble in there. Somehow regathers, finds Antonio Barajas, three ball right wing. Oh! Got the bank. The bank is open. What a shot. What a way to go into half. Oh, my goodness. I did not know that at 8.06, the bank was open. Oh my goodness, what a shot in the arm for Coach Ensley as he heads into the locker room. And what a killer for Hudson's Bay as they head into the locker room. All right, so at the half, we've got the um, Fort Vancouver Trappers 38, the Hudson's Bay Eagles 19. We're gonna have a little bit more of an extended halftime here as we are going to recognize, I believe, the dance team and the cheer team. So we got a little bit more of a um, extended halftime here. So we hope that you stay with us and um, we will be back with you in about 14 minutes.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, <coughs> we have got some, before we start the second half, there's some things we want to talk about. I'll wait for my partner in crime to get his headset on, but while he's doing that, um, we also want to highlight that for high school, the spring season, sports season, is going to start here on Monday, February 27th. So again, we want to promote that is track and field, that is girls tennis, that is girls golf, that is uh, baseball, that is softball, boys soccer. Boys soccer. Um, so at the end of the day, we just encourage, and VPS encourages all kids to get out and participate, be a part of something, um, and just kind of learn what it's, you know, learn what it's like to be a part of a team, um, and just, you know, and have that sense of belonging. That's, you know, that's huge for us here in this district. So we want to promote that sense of belonging and just getting kids to um, be engaged in something in the springtime. Well, and I think the perfect example of this is the fact that uh, both of these teams are not necessarily, well, not playoff bound. They're not necessarily having the seasons they wanted, uh, wins and loss wise. But when you look at the crowd here and when you listen, if you were standing outside, you think this is a playoff game. And so um, those are the things that, again, the experience that you're going to gain from being a part of a team and being able to go through these ups and downs hopefully will help you uh, as you move forward in uh, in your life. And again, right. as, ahead, I'm sorry. as Fort Vancouver is coming out of the locker room right now, you've got a tunnel of their students and their fellow classmates and just the, the atmosphere here for a team that is 1 in 18, I believe, is just unrivaled. So one of the other things we want to highlight um, before we kind of talk to you, just real quick synopsis of the first half is the, the levies coming up. And so I believe Valentine's Day is uh, when we get out and vote. So we just encourage you to vote for that. Um, and, you know, sports is, a, is, a, is one of those things that's a part of this. And so we just want to encourage that. As you can see, this is a great atmosphere tonight. And it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of on this Monday night. You know, I, I thoroughly enjoy being in the gym. And just it doesn't matter who it is. It's just fun to, to watch high school kids. Um, give everything they got. Well, and it's not just the basketball players on the court. The cheerleaders, they did a great job at halftime with their performance. The band has been able to get the energy and just been playing some great music. And so, again, going back to the atmosphere here at Fort Vancouver, um, between the cheerleaders, the band, the student section, they're just doing a great job of promoting, like, their school and just really putting the, a good foot forward for Fort Vancouver. So... We got about two minutes left before the halftime is over. So let's talk about this. Okay, Fort Vancouver, 38. Hudson Bay Eagles, 19. Let's talk first about the Eagles. So you're almost down 20 going into to the half. Your coach, Tony Holmes, you saw some good things with Isaac Finn battling, trying to get boards, offense and defensive rebound, getting a couple end ones. Rob Bauman was able to get, um, you know, kind of down the lane and get some good looks. What are you thinking second half wise, Sid? I think you have to attack inside out. So you have to make sure that you are utilizing Isaac Finn's ability to rebound and attack the hoop. And also attack that the fact that uh, Fort Vancouver is not very deep, not very big. Tavon Vance has three fouls. I believe Caleb has two. Liam, I know, has at least one. And so you want to attack that. You want to make the referees have to blow the whistle a little bit, get on the free throw line, slow the clock down and try to chip away. Again, there, there's no 20 point shot, but there's a lot of two, three, four opportunities that you can get up and down. So, always gotta go the flip side of that. You're James Ensley and the Trappers. What's your game plan second half? If you are James Ensley, it is zero, zero. You are telling your team that we have not won anything, that you have not done anything except put together one of probably their better halves of, the, of this uh, season. And knowing Coach Ensley, and uh, what this what this can do. We've both been on sides where, you know what, it felt like it was over, and then next thing you know, there's a. So one of the things we want to highlight real quick is you've coached both sides of this. What has probably been, what has been your most exciting part of this rivalry? Um, I think, I think the most exciting part of this rivalry um, on both sides were, I think it was back in 2017 or 18, uh, there was a playoff 
basically a play in to get into a playoff game. So I was at Fort Vancouver. Uh, it was a senior night again, similar to what we have tonight, um, except Bay had to beat us at Fort to get into, to force a one game playoff. They did. Um, there's a, a classic announce announcement from the call on the game that night about a basketball player doing a backflip across the court. Um, and then they ended up winning the, the play in game the next morning at Union High School and getting into the playoffs. So I think that was one of those, uh, one of those memorable ones to be on the up opposite side. All right, so we had Aaron Melendez shoot two free throws there. He kind of attacked down the middle, got fouled. So already comes out and extends the lead to 21. Isaac Finn, oh, Isaac Finn um, gets fouled there trying to go up. So strong move there by Isaac Finn. That foul is going to be on number zero, Liam Savitkovich. That is his third. So. Oh, man, early foul trouble there for Liam as we just started the second half. Wouldn't well, you know that's going to be Hudson's Bay's, that's got to be your bread and butter at this point is get it inside, let Isaac Finn go to work, hopefully draw some fouls. Uh, one key difference from the first half to the second half is uh, Anthony Garces Armstrong is now in the game for Hudson's Bay. He is great at attacking the hoop, pushing the ball up the court. Yeah, so the Eagles start the second half with Rob Bauman, Akil Bauman, Greg Perry, Anthony Garces Armstrong and Isaac Finn as we had a corner three there from Antonio Barajas. Fort gets its own rebound and gets the easy two. Again, goes back to defensive rebounding. You cannot give up extra offensive possessions when you're trying to cut down a 22 point lead. And Fort started its same starters that it had to start the game with Tavon Vance, Liam Savitkovich, Caleb Savitkovich, Antonio Barajas, and Aaron Melendez. So Antonio has the ball, drives to the key, finds Tavon. To no good, Finn with the rebound, and that's what he does for you, right? It's a great defensive rebound. He was able to snag that out of the air and just grab the ball. Rob Bauman ball at the top of the key. Gets to gets to the about six foot line, shoots the floater, no good, but gets fouled. So let's see who they charge that to. They charge that to number three, Caleb Savikovic. That's his second. So the brothers pick up two quick fouls. That's a great take by Raw. Get into the line. You want to get to the line, score some points while the clock is not running. Got to start hitting some of these free throws, though. So we want to give a quick update. Raw hits one of two. It looks like Evergreen is up on Prairie 18 to 15 at the end of the first. Mark Morris about three minutes left to play up 63 53 um, over our long we do not have the mountain view uh kelso score yet but we'll get that to you as fort gets a another layup anthony garces has the ball on the right wing gets to the elbow jumper two no good rebound fort i think that at this point hudson's bay isaac finn needs to touch the ball on every possession ball ends up in liam's hand three ball no good defensive rebound isaac finn Kicks it to Garces, who kicks it up the court to Greg Perry, who goes to drive to the rack, gets fouled by number three, Caleb Savikovic, picks up his third. Right now, if you are Fort Vancouver, you've got to figure out a way to steal some time right now with a lot of your guys in foul trouble. Rob Bauman, three ball right wing, no good. Defensive rebound, Caleb Savikovic. Swings it to his brother, Liam, who brings the ball up the court. Kind of loses the handle. Rob Bauman gets in there, tries to get the steal. They're going to say he got him on the arm going for that steal. Foul on number two, Rob Bauman. It's a tough foul. You're just aggressively trying to get the ball. The ball is loose. Uh, you just, that's a really tough foul to pick up. All right, so Caleb inbounds it to Aaron, who gets downhill, goes up for the layup. Rob Bauman with the savvy play to knock it off his knee, off of Aaron's knee, Bay ball. Good hands by Rob. Be able to get the ball out and then have it go off of his knee and keep possession. Again, Hudson's Bay has to get it inside to Isaac Finn at some point. Eagles with the missed jumper. Aaron gets the ball, bringing the balls up the court, gets to the right wing, finds Liam, swings it back out to Aaron, drives, elbow jumper, no good, rebound, Akil Bauman. Looks to bring the ball to the court, doesn't see anything, finds Finn, cutting down the lane, two point bucket. Good job by Akil getting the ball to Isaac. Isaac just attacking to the hoop, getting it, getting two. All right, so Fort Vancouver 44, the Eagles 23. Aaron has the ball at the top of the key. 
Drives right, right side, jump stop, kicks out to Antonio Barajas. Finds Liam in the right corner. Jump stop in the middle of the key. Barajas, three ball, corner pocket, no good. So, Rob Bauman with the defensive rebound. Those are the shots that went down in the first half. Oh, tough turnover on that. Raw getting to his spot. He's been getting to that spot all night. And sometimes he's been able to convert and sometimes he hasn't. That one just wasn't able to convert. Turnover. Fort has the ball. Caleb kind of backs down number three. Greg Perry goes up. Doesn't make the bucket, but they're going to call the foul. Let's see who they call that foul on. They're going to call that foul on number two, Rob Malman. That's his third. Um, Caleb's going to go to the line and shoot two. So it's a tough one for Ra. You're trying to play that help side D, but then you just come in and get him on the arm as he's going up. Well, those last two have been tough for him. The, the second foul that he picked up was the one on the sideline where he's just trying to be aggressive and go get a loose ball. Oh, so must have been a little drafty there. Caleb missed the first one, so that happens. Um, but we've got number 10 checking in. That is J-Mo Hicks for number 34, Antonio Barajas. The one thing about Caleb is you are not going to rattle this guy. He played quarterback. He's, he's a baseball player. He's been a, a three-year varsity basketball player. Uh, he is he is as unrattleable as possible. I'm not sure that's a word, but uh, I like it. that is. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So he did miss the second. Finn got the, the rebound. Garces takes a volleyball line three. No good. Trappers get the defensive rebound, and Aaron does what Aaron does best. He gets out and he pushes the tempo, draws the foul on number 12, the freshman, Akil Baum, and that is his third. So some of the Eagle starters are getting into early foul trouble here. Well, and again, that comes back to long shot, long rebound, Fort getting up and down the court. Hicks has the ball in the corner, kicks to Caleb. Three ball, bang, bang, bang. Oh, and that goes back again. He is not going to falter. He is a, a senior who's been through everything here at Fort Vancouver. Jackson the Pelt, right ring, drives baseline. Strong take, two point bucket. It's a great drive baseline and then just get into the hoop. And again, that's what Hudson's Bay needs to do. They need to attack the hoop. They need to stop settling for threes and get to the hoop, draw some fouls. Hicks. Goes down the lane, draws the foul on number 12, Akil Bauman. So he picks up his fourth. So pretty imagine that Akil's going to have to go go sit a while as Coach Tony doesn't want him to pick up his fifth. No, and again, he's just an aggressive defender. Did a good job. That was actually a nice move by uh, Hicks. So Hicks at the line, misses the first. We've got two subs coming in for the Eagles. We've got uh, number four, Braden... Actually, no, that's not going to happen. So we're just actually going to have number five, Lincoln Goo, check in for number 12. A little confusion over there. That happens. Hicks at the line for the second. No good. Finn, another defensive rebound. That guy's well, got to have 10. And this is where, if you're Hudson's Bay, you got to start chipping away. you got to start trading twos for empty possessions. Greg Perry, three ball. No good. Finn, offensive rebound. Put back, got it. Great soft touch there by the big man. Yep, your best offense right now is Isaac Finn being in the paint. Fort takes the ball quickly out of the net. Aaron gets a good take to the rack, misses the layup. Um, we've got a little five on three transition. Finds Finn going down the lane, Euro step, easy two. 47-29, Trappers. This is the run you've got to make if you're Hudson's Bay, so you've got to start training. There is another steal. There's another turnover by the Trappers. Garces, two-point layup, no good. Greg Perry tries to get the offensive rebound, can't get it. Tavon on the ground. James Inzi, coaching veteran move there, gets the full timeout, is going to settle this down. Got to make sure Enz is okay over there. He got up quick <laughs> off of that bench. I don't know if I've seen that guy move that quick. All right, so... Coach Enns is going to take a, uh, a full timeout here. We've got 3.03 left in the third. Score is uh, the Fort Vancouver Trappers, 47. Hudson's Bay Eagles, 39. Hudson's Bay right now, you've got to run your offense through Isaac Finn, whether it be just a, a paint touch to have him kick it out to a shooter, but he's got to touch the ball every time on offense. You cannot settle for a long jump shot. You cannot settle for a quick shot without Isaac Finn touching the ball. Uh, for Vancouver at this point, you've got to start to slow the game down. You are up by 18. 
um, you are in a little bit of foul trouble, not necessarily uh, in a spot where you're you're worried yet, but you've got a couple of starters, you've got a couple of uh, key contributors who've got three fouls right now, and you do not want to go deep into that bench. All right, so we got a little score update here. Mountain View tops Kelso 69-63 at the uh, kind of playing game to see who takes first and see who takes second. Isaiah Vargas with 39 points for Mountain View. So Coach JC Alexander is gonna be first. Coach Kinch is going to be second for Kelso. And then we've got um, Prairie and Evergreen trying to get that third seed. So 3A basketball pretty much almost wrapped up here. We should know within the, probably the next 15 minutes. That's a great win by Coach Alexander. Good for him, good for his program. I know they cut down the nets on, uh, on Friday night. Uh, hopefully they cut down these and they can send Skyview the bill for that one. Oh, I'm definitely cutting them down if it's me. I, hey, Grueler, I'll, I'll send me the bill, buddy. I got gotcha. you. All right, so we're back here. Fort Vancouver turns the ball over. So Hudson Bay Eagles probably got to try and get a good look here, cut down this lead. Again, you got to get a paint touch. You got to get Isaac Finn involved in this offense. Garces, three ball, top of the key. Got it. That is crucial. You needed that one. You needed that one. Now you got to play good defense. You got to rebound. You cannot pick up any silly fouls. Cable with the ball at the top of the key, drives left wing. Or, and we're going to have a foul on number one, Garces. Anthony Garces is Caleb. Great take. Great just, hey, I'm the senior. I'm going to settle this down. I'm going to attack. And I'm going to just either get fouled or I'm going to make the layup. Oh, for sure. Caleb's just a veteran. Again, it goes back to somebody who's played multiple sports, who's been the guy on multiple sports and just knows how to slow down some of these runs. So Caleb at the line shooting the first. No good. So he's going to get the second, um, second attempt here. And this is where, Sid, you talked about it earlier. Free throws is going to play a vital part in this game going down the stretch. Misses the second one. Finn tips it. Appel comes up with it. Garces now has the ball. Let's see what he sets up for the Eagles offense. Swings it to the right corner. Braden Pennington, the shooter. Bang. Got it. That Cuts the lead that. to 12. Lincoln Good tries to go for the steal. Um, tries to go for the steal and picks up his third. So Antonio Barajas at the line, shooting the one-on-one. -one. He makes the first one, so 48-35, 13-point lead. Misses the second. Finn comes up with the crucial defensive rebound. 13-point lead for the Trappers. Eagles set up the offense. Finn at the high post. Appelled at the top of the key. Swings to the Garces. Finds Finn at the high post. Goes in for the two. Gets swatted. Eagles retain possession. Even though that was blocked, that's a great job by Isaac Finn of just getting a ball up, getting a shot up, and making sure that you retain possession. All right, so... Number five, Lincoln Good checks out of the game. Number two, Rob Alman checks into the game. So Braden Pennington, deep three. No good. Appel with the offensive rebound. Swings it out to Garces at the top. Another three ball. No good. Rob Bauman with a great offensive rebound. Goes up two. Tough great two take. over Tavon Vance. Got it. It's a great rebound. Great put back by Rob. And again, it's an 11-point game now, so you cannot settle for three-point shots. Caleb drives down the middle, finds Barajas, three ball, misses it, but Garces jumps, lands into the shooter. Antonio Barajas is going to go to the line and shoot three. So not the closeout you teach there. Oh, and that's tough. You had the Hudson's Bay fans starting to get in it. You had a little momentum on your side, and now Antonio Barajas is standing at the free throw line shooting three. So he makes the first one. Got two more. Looks like we're going to have an uh, eagle sub on the second. And that's going to be Greg Perry. We'll see who he comes in for. Barajas makes the second. Man, that kid can shoot, huh? We've got uh, Greg Perry checking in for number one, Anthony Garces Armstrong. Looks like he has three fouls, and he, that's in just in the third quarter. So you want to calm him down, let him 
kind of sit for a little while, save him for the fourth quarter. All right, so Barajas misses the third. Finn comes up with another defensive rebound, kicks it to Ra, pushes the tempo, swings it to Braden in the corner, three ball, got it. The shooter is finally getting hot. We love it. Four Vancouver Trappers, 50. Hudson's Bay Eagles, 40. Barajas quick on the inbounds, has the ball, kicks it to Savinovich in the corner, finds Tavon on the block, kicks it out to Aaron, pushes back to the middle, jump stop. Barajas, corner three, looks at it, doesn't like it, gets to the rack. What a take. Oh, Two my goodness. Two floater out of the itch. The stretched hands of Isaac Finn. Oh, my goodness. Antonio Barajas have a game tonight. Braden Pennington looks at the deep three, doesn't like it, swings it back to Rob Bauman, floater at the elbow. No good. Tavon Vance, big defensive rebound. 36 seconds left. Fort has the ball. William drives right down the lane, misses the chippy. Off, uh, defensive rebound, Jackson Appel gets out in transition, pushes it. He takes a three ball, top of the key, no good. Aaron Melendez with a defensive rebound. We are getting up and down right now. Well, I think that's a little bit of Jackson's youth, and I'm sure Coach Tony would have wanted to hold it for that last shot. All right, so Fort up 12. Savinovic drives down the key, spin moves, passes to Tavon Vance who goes up strong, misses, but Isaac Finn on the foul. So Isaac Finn picks up his second. So Tavon Vance is going to go to the line. He's going to shoot two. Try to extend this lead to 14 going to the fourth quarter. All right, so he misses the first. Well, so, if you're, if you're Hudson's Bay, you've got to feel confident. Now with 12, possibly a 13 point, you cut down that lead from halftime. So eight seconds, misses Finn with another defensive rebound. Seven seconds, six on the clock, five, four, three. Rock kicks it to Braden in the corner, three ball. Bang. Got it, bang, 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 baby. Woo, there we go. All right, so after three, the four Vancouver Trappers, 52. Hudson's Bay Eagles, 43, nine point ball game. Bay's got to be feeling good. Fort, hopefully they're not getting tight on senior night. What are we thinking here, Coach Sid? You know what? Again, this is what Coach Ensley, I'm sure he's preaching right now in his huddle as he's talking to his players of, you knew Bay was not going to go away. So now you've got to withstand that um, and hopefully feed off of your, your energy from your fans. Both student sections now are, are up and ready to go. Um, but the you band just want oh man, the cheerleaders the are here cheering. Oh, the cheerleaders—they got the pyramid out. They are ready to go. So didn't mean to cut that point off, but man, this atmosphere is fun. So we got about 18 seconds before the start of the fourth. Um, Nine-point ball game. A couple stops, couple buckets. This could be a totally different game for Bay, but also the same for Fort. Couple stops, couple buckets. They could extend that lead easily to 15 again. Well, if you're Bay, again, you've got to have your offense run through Isaac Finn, whether it be as a facilitator or a scorer, because he's doing a great job right now. And defensively, Fort Vancouver's struggling staying in front of him. All right, so the Eagles are going to start uh, Anthony Garces Armstrong, Rob Bauman, Isaac Finn, Braden Pennington, and Greg Perry. The Fort Vancouver Trappers are going to start Leon Savidovich, Caleb Savidovich, Tavon Vance, Aaron Melendez, and Antonio Barajas. So the, the line that James Inslee loves to stay with. All right, they find Finn on the block. Tries, takes a nice little running big man hook there. Gets fouled, though. See who they charge that to. They're going to charge that to number 14, Tavon Vance. He picks up his fourth foul. So Isaac Finn's going to go to the line. He's going to shoot two. Try to, try to shorten this lead a little bit. Well, and again, you got to convert on these free throws because the clock is not moving. So you're able to cut down while you're keeping the clock from running down. All right, so Finn makes the first, shoots the second, gets the second. So now we're looking at a seven-point ball game. Lim's bringing the ball up the floor. Dribbles to the right, left side, excuse me, finds Aaron Melendez. Looking to get to the rack. Rob Bauman's playing great defense, keeping him in front. Spin move. Ross stays down, two-foot bucket over the hands of Ra and Isaac Finn. Nice finish, nice defensive play on that as well. Garces looks at the deep three, decides not to. They find Finn on the block, double comes, he spins baseline, tries to go for the up and under, but takes the tough two out of the hands of Vance. Man, whew, tough move. That's tough for Tavon because he's got four fouls right now. He's got to be smart, but also he's got to match the physicality of Isaac Finn. So, Aaron... 
Oh, my gosh. Aaron takes a drive at Raw, gets an easy layup, but Finn beats it off the backboard. Bay gets out in transition. Looks like they're not going to count the layup. They're going to call a, a foul on the ground. That's going to be on number 34, Antonio Barajas. So he did a great job. That's a veteran move there. Hey, let's not give up the easy layup. Let's take the foul and force Bay to take it out. Of, take a side out. Oh, for sure. Momentum has swung heavily to the ego side at this point. So Raw has the ball at the top of the key, swings it to Braden Pennington, looks three. Travel. Can't have that one. You know, this is where, again, I think that the energy and the atmosphere is really going to feed into both teams. So we are seven minutes on the clock. Quarterback group 54, Hudson's Bay 47. Anything can happen right now. This is setting up for one of those Bay Fort games where there's going to be a game winner somewhere. Of course. And why not on our last broadcast? We love it. Bring it on. Brahas has the, has the ball in the middle of the key, misses the layup. Tavon gets the offensive rebound. Goes up strong, gets fouled. That looks like that foul is going to be on number one. Anthony Garces Armstrong picks up his fourth. So, kid's playing hard, but he's just picking up cheapies. Well, and both teams are finding success when they attack the hoop. So that, even though he didn't make the, the layup on the initial shot, was able to set up an offensive rebound and then draw the foul. So Tavon misses the first. Is it opportunity for the second? Misses the second. Finn tries to get his hand on it. They're going to say he tipped it out trying to get it. So tough break. So tough break for the Eagles. Ford's going to have the ball baseline out of bounds. Let's see what they draw up here. Eagles have struggled on the defense with the baseline out of bounds play. So hopefully they can get that figured out. They switch to a man. Good job. They find Aaron in the corner who swings it out to Liam in the corner. Barajas top. Drives right. Spin move on Jackson Appel. Finds Aaron left wing. Him and Ra in a little one-on-one -on -one iso game. Spin move. Goes back to the middle. Liam, baseline jumper, no good. Raw defensive rebound. That was a great defensive possession by Hudson's Bay, and then an excellent job of them getting that defensive rebound. Braden Pennington, wide open, three ball corner, no good. Jackson Appel offensive rebound, gathers, goes up strong. Let's this see if they call that call. on the ground or they say he was going up for two. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Uh, Eagles. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. They say that's going to go up. So Antonio Baraja picks up his third. Jackson Appel at the line shooting two. Got my foul count messed up there, but excuse me. So Appel at the line shooting the first of two. Knocks it down. Hudson's Bay with two seniors, a junior, and two freshmen on the court right now. So there's a little mix of uh, veteran leadership and uh, young scoring. Makes the second. Five-point ball game, 6-11 left to play. Fort Vancouver 54, Hudson's Bay 49. Liam brings the ball up the court. Backdoor cutter, Antonio Barajas not there. Kicks it out to his brother Caleb at the top of the key. Kill's guarding him. Kill's got to be careful as he's got four. Caleb gets to the rack, kicks out to his brother. Three ball, corner pocket. Extends that lead back to eight. What a shot. What a shot in the corner. Braden Pennington tries to match. No good. Fort Vancouver gets the defensive rebound. And Bay going a little 55 full court pressure there, trying to see if they can create a little chaos. This is where Bay has to get a little careful that they're not trading three-point shots because right now they have the most dominant offensive player inside. So tough two there from Caleb. Misses the layup. Eagles get the defensive rebound. They come down. They push hard. They draw the foul on... But looks like that foul is going to be on number one, Aaron Melendez. So Rob Baum is going to go to the line and shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Every foul from now on out will be free throws, so it will come down to shooting free throws. Rob makes the first. So, 57-50. Rob Bauman at the line. Makes the second. 57, 51, six point lead for it. Aaron's bringing the ball up the court, guarded closely by number two, Rob Bauman. Gets to the right side. Rob gets in and creates the steal. Finds Braden. Looks like they, looked, they wanted to hit the easy layup, but couldn't find it. 
kicks it to Jackson Appel. Baseline rip, two point bucket, got it. Four point ball game. Bay back in the 55 pressure. That was a great possession all the way around. Braden didn't have the numbers going forward. Caleb, tough three, top of the key, no good. Lands in the hands of Jackson Appel. Kicks it to Rob Bauman, brings the ball up the court. Let's see what they do. Do they go inside out or do they look at a three ball? Kicks it to Braden on the left wing, back to Raw at the top. Gets to the elbow, swings to the right corner. Oh, Finn did not get out of there, so they're going to call a three-second violation. Well, that's a tough one for Isaac. He's just trying to do some work down below. He's being harassed and banged around with the bigs down low, and, I mean, he just didn't get that other foot out. All right, so Ford brings the ball up quickly. Liam's guarded closely by number 32, Jackson Appel. Liam swings it to his brother, Caleb. Got about 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Caleb surveys. Looks to get downhill, kicks it to his brother. Looks like they're kind of running a little motion, trying to run some time off the clock. Barajas, tough floater, no good. Finn, another rebound. Yep, that's been the, the change in the second half is uh, Isaac Finn really just dominating the boards. The kill Bauman, three, no good. Finn got a hand on it but missed it. Fort comes up with the defensive rebound. It's a big rebound for Fort. You need to slow the game down right now. Get a good shot. So, game is starting to get a little tense. Coach Ensley recognized that. Takes the full timeout. Yep, again, again, Coach Ensley, he knows what his team can and cannot do. He's trying to get everything out of his team. So, you take this timeout, you drop a good play, you try to get a good offensive uh, set so you can get a, a quick hoop. If you're Coach Tony on the other side, though, you want to make sure that you uh, you continue the pressure, you continue the defense. You want to make sure that you're getting big guys that come in the ball in the middle. So, 351 left in the fourth. Fort Vancouver 57, Hudson's Bay Eagles 53. Both teams from here on out are in the bonus. So, the foul is going to put somebody, either team, at the free throw line. The crowds are fantastic. Both student sections have woken up. The band is playing some great music. Cheerleaders are dancing. This is a fun environment to be at right now. Yeah, you know, this uh, has all the makings of a few years back when uh, Myron Lawrence hit a spinner, just a spinning floater over uh, Tony King and just extends the game to overtime before it ends up winning the game. Uh, the late Myron Lawrence lost him too soon. So uh, those are the kind of memories that this game creates again. Man, that kid could figure it out, couldn't he, Sid? Oh, man, he was just, he was one of those, yeah, you just, he had a lot of fire in him. Yeah, he did. All right, so, on the floor for the Eagles, we've got Anthony Garces with four, Akil Bauman with four, Jackson Appel, I think, has three, Rob Bauman has three, and Isaac Finn has two. For the Trappers, we've got Caleb Savinovich with three, Liam Savinovich with two, turnover there for the Trappers, Raw with the steal. Goes up strong, misses the layup. They're going to say there's a foul on the ground there first, so Raw's going to go to the line to shoot two. So that foul is going to be charged to number one, Aaron Melendez, who picks up his third. So foul trouble both ways for the Eagles and the Trappers. Yeah, Raw's got to hit these free throws, cut the lead. Raw misses the first. So he's got, let's see what he does here for the second. Misses oh. the second, but Isaac Finn with a crucial offensive rebound gets the easy two. Two-point ball game, 57-55. Again, Isaac Finn has been the difference for the Eagles since he came in in the second quarter. He's made a huge impact for them. Bay's playing a tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Caleb with a, a layup, no good. Heavily contested by Isaac Finn, who comes up with a defensive rebound. Rob Allen bringing the ball up the floor, getting the Eagles set. A little high-low action, let's see what we do. Kicks it left wing, Anthony Garces, who rips baseline, finds Jackson Pelt cutting to the hoop. Back out to Garces, three ball, no good. Finn keeps it alive. Tough two, fading away, no good. Fort with the defensive rebound. Fort getting on going. They're not trying to slow it down and just get one possession at a time. They're trying to get the easy ones as well. So this game is very up-tempo as we see number three, Caleb drive to the hoop, gets fouled. Let's see who they call that one on. Looks like it's going to be on Jackson Appel. Looked like it was a great defensive play, but again, 
the referees are in better position than we are. We're up here with the student sections and the band up in the top of the, the trap, so. So Jackson Appel, I thought he had a couple tonight. That's only his first, so that's, a, that's really good for the Eagles. As Caleb is at the line, makes the first three-point ball game, see if he can make the, the second and extend this lead to four. This is the second. Jackson Appel with the defensive rebound. Three-point ball game, 247 left to play. Well, if you're the Eagles, again, you want to try and work it into Isaac Finn. You want to attack. Appel, ball, left wing, kicks it out to Ra, who swings it to Garces, swings it to Akil, back to Garces, back to Ra. Looking inside to see if they can find Isaac Finn, but he's got a double coming. Ra forces the pass, four with the steal. Caleb's bringing the ball up the court. Looks like it's a little five on four as Ra got hurt in that play. Missed floater. A lot of contact on that one. There is a lot of contact for both teams. So it looks like we got Ra is limping here with a with an ankle. We've got Aaron Melendez down on the ground over here. See if we ref stop play. Let's see what we got here. Again, this is one of those Hudson's Bay, Fort Vancouver. Just slugfest, but at the end of the game, it's last person standing. All right, so Eagles are going to have the ball, maintain possession, 58-55. The freshman, Kiel Bauman, bringing the ball up the court. Kicks it to Braden Pennington, who's in the corner, who came in for Rob Bauman. Kicks it back to Akil, drives. Akil tries to force the Braden in the corners, ripped by Aaron Melendez. Takes the two Euro step, got it. Five point ball game. That's a smooth, calm move by a veteran. Jackson Appellate brings the ball up the court, drives down the left, rips baseline, gets an easy two, three-point ball game, minute 45, Bay in the full court press. Liam brings the ball up the court, finds Barajas cutting back door, two-point bucket, no good. Finn with the defensive rebound. Who else? That guy's probably got a double-double tonight. Braden, three-ball transition, no good. Akil Bauman tries to come in for the offensive rebound. Ends up fouling Caleb. That's going to be Akil's fifth foul. And Caleb's going to go to the line and shoot two. Again, a great, that just a high energy play, trying to make a play. Great job by Caleb of securing that rebound. Akil's just trying to get the rebound with a three point game. So. Let's see who, so who did the, Eagle, the Eagles bring in number three, Greg Perry for Kill Bauman who fouled out. Little Looks like that confusion on what we've got. It's a two shot foul. For Vancouver in the double bonus. Kayla, ooh, misses the first. You know what, if you're Hudson's Bay, again, you cannot get into the three-point shooting panic mode yet. You still got the best player on the court inside with Isaac Finn. So, capitalize on the second, four-point ball game, 61-57. Garce is bringing the ball up the court, sets up the offense, Finn at the high, Greg Perry working the short. Jackson Appelt right ring, they're trying to find Finn. The pelt rips baseline, oh. gets the ball stuck on that. They got to go jump ball, possession fort. That is, that is some tough luck if you're an eagle because, as you saw, Isaac Finn got that, that rebound off of the, the stuck ball. All right, so Bay in the full court press, minute 10 on the clock. Fort Vancouver 61, Hudson's Bay 57. Caleb with the ball at the top, closely guarded by Greg Perry. He's trying to get in and enforce a turnover. Bay has got to go for steals right now, 58 seconds. Liam drives to the middle, jump stop. What a play. It's a great move by a young basketball player, just a sophomore. It's a great timeout also. Uh, we got everyone calling a timeout right now. <laughs> James Inslee, James Jones both wanted that timeout. So Ford gets the full timeout. Actually, I think they, they're giving it to uh, Hudson's Bay on that oh, one. Oh, okay. Everyone had a timeout signal on that. So, six-point ball game, 49-41. Do we, I say do we, I mean to say, okay, you're Hudson's Bay, 49 seconds. 
Do you go for the two? Do you go for the three and then foul? What, what are you thinking here? You know what? I think you attack the hoop. You get Isaac Vin some uh, a paint touch. You try to let him go to work. If he gets a, a bucket and a foul, I think then now you can set up your defense a little more. But you've got to get the ball in his hands to at least get some sort of offense initiated through him. If you're Fort, do you switch it up, full court press one time? I mean, you're up six, do you try to speed them up? Do you just, hey, no, let's sit back in that zone or that man? Or do you, you try to just do something different? You know, I think you just kind of do what you've been doing in the sense of you're, you've got some guys in foul trouble. You've got some guys that, you know, you need on, on the court. You can't afford to pick up a cheap foul because they, it looks like Aaron's going to pick him up full court, though. Garces is with the ball. Looks like Ford's in their little 1-2-2 two, two trap. They find Finn on the block. Tough two, but he Great gets shot. it off the bank. 34 seconds you if foul. you're Bay. You got a foul. That's, you got a foul. You got a foul. Garces is the one that cannot foul. Rob Bauman comes for the double. Ooh, all right. So Inslee gets the timeout. Takes a 30-second. Travers, I believe, was that their last time out, or do they have one more? Uh, no, I think they have one more. I, it kind of depends on who they assessed that last time out to. Everyone had their arms up on that last time out. But it looks like, according to the big, the big board in the, uh, in the trap, that that was Fort Vancouver's final time out. So, if you're Hudson's Bay, four-point ball game, you probably got a foul right away. If you, if you do do that, who do you foul for Fort? Try to foul 14, you try to foul 10. You know what, at this point, you just got to foul quick, and whoever gets it, you got to hope that they, they can't knock it down. So, I mean, the tough part is you got a couple of guys with three and four fouls in there right now that they have to understand that they have to foul. It, it just becomes, uh, what can you do for the team at this point? It's an interesting coaching move there by Coach Tony Holmes to leave in Garces, who has four fouls. but. You know, his quickness, though, he's able to get a steal. Uh, you want him to get up and down the court. He does. There he we comes go. up with the steal. You called it there, Sid. You got to get a, a look down low, get a paint touch. Braden Pennington, three ball. Oh! Bang! 63. It's a two-point game. 61, one-point ball game. Bay oh. fouls. One point. My math, uh, I'm a PE teacher, not a math teacher. Sorry about that. Obviously. <laughs> um. Who do they assess that foul to? They're going to assess that foul to number two, Rob Bauman, fourth personal. So good play there by Rob Bauman. Great luck, though, for Ford as Antonio Barajas is at the line sheet, too. I don't think that kid's missed today. Makes the and first. he avoids the announcer the, jinx the, the on that. Jinx. He thought it was oh coming. No, that kid's got all the confidence in the world right now. So two-point ball game. He's at the line. Let's see if he can make the next. This is the next. Rob Bauman with the Rob Bauman with the defensive rebound. Coach Tony calls timeout. Two point ball game. 16 seconds left. Fort Vancouver 64. Hudson's Bay 62. What a ball game. This is where you let Isaac Finn go to work. I think you draw something up that Isaac can get, get it on the block, attack the hoop, hopefully make a shot and go for the uh, and one. You don't necessarily need to take a a jump shot when you have a guy that's dominated down low on the block. So we've come a long way from that 16 to two first quarter. Fort Vancouver uh, was up. So man, this is this has been exciting. So let's see what uh, Coach Tony has drawn up here with 16 seconds left. I agree with you, Sid. You got You got to find the big on an inside out. Force the Fort Vancouver to trap. See if you can get a shooter open in a corner. So we've got Jackson Appel. It's going to inbound the ball. Rob Bauman's going to be closely guarded by number one, Aaron Melendez. We've got Anthony Garces. Okay, never mind. He finds Rob Bauman. Rob brings the ball up the court. Finds Garces wide open. Wing three. No good. Finn. Finn does the right thing. He can't get the offensive rebound. So he does the foul. Puts Aaron Melendez at the line. He's going to shoot two. If you're Bay, you hope that he misses one. So that you can come down and hope, you know, hope that he missed one or both. If you're Fort, you knock down both of these. That's pretty much going to sign seal and deliver this ball game for Fort. Yeah, you know what? That's a great shot by Anthony Garces Armstrong. He was open in rhythm. So Aaron at the line puts the first one up. Okay, no good, no this, good. This is all the makings of 2022 
in the Eagles' nest. Joey Gordon comes off the double pick three ball game winner. Oh, man. Right. Student section's wild tonight. This has been a great time. Makes the, makes the second three point ball game. Coach Tony calls a timeout. He's got to go the length of the floor in 8.8 .8 seconds, and he's got to get a free look. Looks like a full timeout for Coach Tony. So you've got to assume with the game that Braden Pennington has had that you're going to try and set something up for him. Um, but everyone on the court has to be ready to go when it's your time. Yeah, so if you're, if you're the Eagles, you've got Braden Pennington, who's He's kind of caught a little fire here lately. You've got uh, Anthony Garson Armstrong, who took a good look in the corner. You've got um, Isaac Finn has made one tonight. Um, Rob Bauman's made a couple game winners versus River. So you've, you've got kids for the Eagles that can that can make those threes. Here's defensively, the, excuse me, defensively for Fort, do you match up now? Well, here's the question. That's what I was just going to ask you. Do you foul if you're Fort Vancouver in a one and one situation? Do you foul, put the Eagles on the free throw line, but with the potential of a missed second free throw and Isaac Finn now is battling down there? Man, decisions, decisions. I am glad that they don't pay me the big bucks to do that. That is why you and I are up here and not down there. Oh yeah, no, I'd much rather be up here with you, buddy. I do not want to be down there making these calls. Oh my goodness. So, Bay's gonna inbound. 8.8 um, .8 seconds left. They can run because it was timeout was called on a main basket. They've got to go the length of the floor, 8.8 .8 seconds. Raw inbounds it to Anthony, kicks it back to Ra. Braden Pennington, deep three, no good. Trappers come up with the defensive rebound. Wow. Clock runs out, 65, Trappers 62. Win. Trappers win. Trappers they score win. the court. What a game! This is high school basketball. If you were wondering where your levy dollars and what we can do to help improve student athletes, this is high school basketball. What a game from the trap. Man, Bay, Hudson's Bay battled back. They gave it everything they got, but Fort just kind of withstood the punches and they did everything right to get the, is that the second win of the season for them? Second win. Second win of the season. They end up going two and 18 on the season, but this game had playoff feel about it. Well, and that's the difference I think when you have veteran guys on that Fort Vancouver team who have put in four years of just doing the right thing every day. And so, I mean, good for Coach Ensley, good for good for those guys. Uh, tough way for both teams to, uh, or for Hudson's Bay to end their season. Great way if you're a Fort Vancouver person. So, a couple things we need to talk about before we get off the air. One, we got to shout, shout out our wives. Oh, right? man. They letting us live our dream here doing this. So, we got to give a shout out to Kit and Christina, our gremlins. Hopefully, most of them are in bed right now. No, I'm sure my uh, kids are awake right now waiting for, uh, waiting for me to get home. So, we, the other thing, we got to shout out the kids, the camera crew that worked this. We want to shout out VPS Game Time for allowing us to do this. It's been a, it a great night uh, as we sign off. Yeah, you know what? Hey, if you uh, have an opportunity in the spring, go check out a baseball game, a softball game, a track meet, uh, some tennis matches, some golf matches. Go check all that out. Support these kids. They're working hard. Um, just, you know, support your local schools. All right. Thank you, and good night from the trap.